As we think about ways to incorporate social emotional learning into your program, you can look at both systems and activities. A system is a piece of social emotional learning done, social emotional learning that is not done once in an activity, but is part of the program. So an example of this might be the mood meter. I think the mood meter is a fantastic way to help kids start identifying emotions and identifying these words that we've been talking about as a problem so far. Because I don't think very many kids would come to you and say, I'm feeling devastated, I am feeling ecstatic. Some of them might, but some of these words might, you know, not be within their vocabulary. Uh, so the mood meter is from Ruler, which is a social emotional learning curriculum and methodology from Yale. Uh, parts of it are very expensive. <laughs> so some of those are more difficult to utilize. But the mood meter is something that you can make on your own. For example, in my program, we had construction paper that we put on the board that was red, yellow, blue, and green. Um, and so this link is um, from the creator of Ruler, or one of the creators of Ruler, and him really diving deep into it for about 10 minutes. So that's there if you're very interested in this and want to learn a little bit more. And so the idea with the mood meter is that it is a common understanding for kids to identify how they're feeling. Do you have a question? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's probably raising it. Uh, so the way this is best utilized is when it is incorporated in all areas. So the reason that I became more aware of this and used it in my program is uh, when I was in Washington State, the school district I was working with utilized the entire curriculum. And so all of the kids had this in their room. And a lot of the teachers used it that when the kids came in, they would take their sticker or whatever, their magnet, and they would place it on the mood meter. And the way the mood meter works is that you have two axes. You have your energy and you have your pleasantness. So. If we're thinking about it this way, so say that I come in after school and I'm feeling real low energy, and I go and I sit in the corner and I just want to read my book, all right? I could just be low energy and be completely happy, completely pleasant, like feeling good. I'm just, you know, low energy and I don't want to go outside and run around with my friends right now. I just want to be by myself. Or I could be in this area where I'm low energy, but my pleasantness is also really low. And maybe I'm feeling blue. Um, but also feeling really good, so like, <laughs> right? So identifying where I am in these different areas can really help the program, the staff, other kids to say, oh, she just wants to be by herself. She's good. Or if I'm you know, identifying myself in this area, and I'm identifying, maybe I do want to be by myself, but maybe I'm just sad and that's why. And so this is nice to utilize because it helps the kids think about it themselves. Where am I? And also let everybody else know that as well. And so then one of the pieces that can go a bit further is actually talking with the kids about the mood meter and asking them to identify that vocabulary that we talked about it and put it up here. So this is an example that I found online. There's tons of them online. I did this activity with my kids at one of my programs. Unfortunately, I don't saw my picture because it was a few years ago. But it's nice because you're thinking about, okay, so let's talk through, let's talk through some words that if you're feeling, you know, medium energy, but kind of low pleasantness, what, is, what could that be? And the kids can name different emotions. And letting them choose those words and put them in there. Uh, I think this is from an older group because it has words like contemplative, um, and yeah, that's probably the biggest one up here. But if you give it to the kids and let them label it <coughs> at their level, then they're going to come up with new emotions. And it might be that, you know, I'm saying that I'm feeling, um, we'll say mellow. And some of the other kids might be like, what's mellow mean? And then you can describe it, and they're gaining a new vocabulary word. I think this is amazing because I had this up in um, my rooms for a while with my kids. And because it was so ingrained in them that they used it at school, they used it here. But sometimes when I would ask them, what's going on? How are you feeling right now? They would look at the mood meter and choose a word that they saw. And so they were able to better identify it and really understand where they were. And so it brought about a lot of self-awareness. Because while maybe they didn't have that word you know, in their minds, they 
take a look at this and say, okay, you know, I'm actually feeling unpleasant, but my energy is kind of low. I'm not feeling angry necessarily, but I'm actually kind of feeling intimidated. And, you know, I'm upset about that. And so then they can have those words that then you can utilize to then think about what are these next steps for taking, right? Because intimidated is a very different next step than, you know, enraged. So does anybody have any questions or thoughts about the mood meter? Does anybody utilize anything like this in their kids in terms of talking about new vocabulary words? No, no. I mean, we use a um, emotion stage more of, oh, yeah. but I feel like it's not as much about the language for them necessarily as like saying where they are on it. The schools also utilize that, and it's more around their behavior, <coughs> clipping up and clipping down. But I like that it's better because it identifies it more than just making them feel like they go up and down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> yeah, and it's helpful too, and I think you mentioned this, but when you're in certain states, you're not as able to find yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you have to come down to a certain level, or you know, you're not able to even go up for some kids, up to a certain level to really get to that problem. Once the mood meter is incorporated into the program, uh, it can be integrated into different activities, such as read alouds. Uh, you could ask the kids to expand on how do you think the character is feeling by asking them where would that feeling fall on the mood meter. So with the sample safer lesson plan in the course room uh, with Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, you might ask, have you ever woken up in a bad mood? How do you know that you're in a bad mood? How does it feel? Show me on the mood meter where you would be if you woke up and you felt like everything was already going wrong. So that would be a, one activity, an activity of read aloud, that's built into that system of the mood meter. Let's look at an example of an activity, a read aloud. Um, this example doesn't pull in the mood meter, but is an active way to address the skill of self-awareness and identifying how characters feel in a story. So I'm going to do a quick example. Unfortunately, the book that I wanted to bring wasn't available at the library, but I found a short excerpt online. So I'm going to do a quick read aloud. Um, the book is Zen Shorts um, by John Muth, which if you haven't read it, it's amazing. I love it. There's like a whole series around it. Um, but what's the last name? First name is John J O N. Last name is Muth. I believe is how you pronounce it. M U T H. And he has Zen shorts, and then there's something like Zen ties, Zen socks. It's all sorts of things. <laughs> um, but I haven't read some of the other ones. So, if you were doing a read aloud or some kind of you know story with the kids, what are some questions that you could ask them during it? to identify some emotions from that moment or some feelings. Does anybody think of an example? Yeah. How does he feel? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How does the character feel? How do you think they're feeling right now? What's going through that mind? Yes, what's going through their mind right now? What do you think? Yeah. What does he look like? How's his face look or like yeah. talking about like what the actual emotion looks like? Yeah, that's great. What does their face look like? Body language. Like, yeah. So put yourself in their shoes, what would that feel like? You put yourself in their shoes, what kind of shoes would they be wearing? How would it feel? Yeah, that's great. All these are awesome examples. So some of the questions that I thought, and you, I think you actually came up with a lot of these. Um, how do you think he or she feels? He is in this um, Why do you think that? So that could be what about their face makes you think that? Or what about that? How would you have felt in that situation? Has anyone felt this way before? Um, do you want to tell us about a time that you felt that way? Do you want to share a story? So those are some great questions that you can ask when you're doing a read aloud. And just to get the kids talking about it and identifying those different emotions. So I'm going to read you a quick story. I'm sorry I don't have the pictures. I did it come to the library in time. All right, so this, the title of this Zen short is called A Heavy Load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman who was waiting to step out of her carriage. The rates had made deep tunnels and she couldn't step across without ruining 
her silken robes. She stood there looking very cross and impatient. Why do you think she was cross or impatient? Because she didn't want to ruin her. Really? <laughs> she didn't want to ruin whatever she had on. Yeah, she didn't want to ruin what she had on. And what about impatient? Who knows what impatient means? She couldn't think of a solution, so it's like, well, I want to get on with this, but this is blocking me, and yeah. I can't, why do I have to fix this? Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. Right. She stood there looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place her packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman and said nothing and walked by. The older monk quickly picked, up, picked her up and put her on his back. He transported her across the puddle and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. How do you think you would feel if something like that happened to you, if you were the older monk who helped the lady across the puddle? Um, it depends. Offended. All right. Well, some people help people for the sake of helping. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. some people will hold doors for other people and be like, well, I hold it up, I hold it up to you, you can say thank you. Mm -hmm. so, Expecting something in return. Mm -hmm. right. Those are two different feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't think the older monk shoved him out of the way and departed. As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude. But you picked her up on your back and carried her. Then she didn't even say thank you. So who can tell me what you think that story meant? What's something that you noticed about that story? Don't hold on to what kinds of things? Emotion. Yeah, so don't hold on to those negative emotions, right? Because the older one said, oh, I wasn't worried about but don't hold on to emotions that aren't even yours to hold on to. It wasn't his problem. It wasn't his his burden to carry. Like he said, he let it go when he dropped her off. So. Yeah. Read alouds are really a great way to have kids become more comfortable with emotions and discussing social situations because it can always be, remain hypothetical. When they say how they would feel, it's not saying, well, this is how I felt when it happens. Instead, it's looking at somebody else and saying that's how they would feel in that situation. You can also connect it to their lives by saying this happens to other people and here's how they feel about it. Here's how they dealt with it. What do you think about that? So I think that read-alouds are a great way to practice um, different social-emotional learning skills, especially thinking about um, being aware of yourself, managing your own emotions, communicating with one another. So there's a lot of different ways. If you want to look at it more specifically, again, the template in the course room um, about the read-aloud. Let's go over one more activity as a final example um, and look at the safer elements of it. So. Here on the screen, you can see a link to the Every Monday Matters, a fantastic free curriculum available to you. Um, one of their activities about um, rings of trees. And you can take the time to click on it, look it over, but it is more or less thinking about how trees have rings to show their different experiences and how it shows that they grow. And how people can also have those experiences and they create a project where um, people draw their own rings and they label different experiences. So maybe one of my younger experiences is going to be my baby sister was born. Um, and then a bigger experience that I remember from my childhood might be when my softball team won our league's championship and going out and out. So I think this is a really fun activity <laughs> to start with um, and Every Monday Matters does a really nice SEL curriculum. 
but let's look through the different safer elements in the order that we are doing them on our lesson plan for the final forum post. So it starts by explicit. It is describing emotions associated with personal experiences. This is actually from um, the Illinois State Standards for fifth graders. It's number 28 on our list if you're looking. It's also sequenced. Uh, you might not be able to see that necessarily because it's just one standalone lesson plan, but um, this activity would likely be done with other um, curriculum from this Every Monday Matters program and with a group that was comfortable thinking about their past and um, thinking about their emotions. So it's likely sequence. We just have to make some assumptions here. It's also active because um, the group is actively making a product. They're drawing the different rings of their lives and also getting to share with one another. It's also focused. You can see this from um, the monthly series that this was drawn from. The monthly series focuses on digging in both in nature, the community, and yourself. It's actually 24 activities on this topic, totaling nine hours of activities um, in the different areas. So it is very focused. It offers a good amount of time to really to dig in. And are the kids reflecting in this lesson plan? Yes, they have lots of reflection questions available. Um, some of my favorites are, what new things did you discover about yourself by completing this activity? Um, were your experiences easy to identify? Were they all positive? And if not, how did the negative experiences help you grow? Um, what helps you grow in life? And so they give you this long list and you can really choose to make sure that you're thinking about what am I making sure that my group is focusing on? What's my explicit goal? Is it focused within our programmatic goal or our monthly goal? And is it, you know, a good uh, level for the kids I'm working with? There's a variety of activities available online for free. Uh, this was just one example. So check out our list of our favorite SEL activity websites so that you can see some ideas. And you can even use these as jumping off points for your social emotional learning lesson plan that you're working on.